everyone, I'm Carla and thanks for joining my YouTube channel, Carla K Art, all about my artwork. I um, hope you're having a great day. It's so hot outside here in the Pacific Northwest. It's It's got to be in the mid 80s. It was up to 100 yesterday in some places. Um, But today I'm out in the studio because it's a little bit cooler. <laughs> Thank goodness in the house. And I'm going to um, be doing a Dutch pour. So I'm going to move the camera angle here and set it up so that you can watch me work. Um, so that you can see everything that's happening here on the canvas. And I've already gotten myself covered with paint while I'm sitting here talking to you. So um, I'll be back in just a second at the different angle. And I'll show you how this is, this is going to work out. Oh my goodness. I hope you guys can see everything okay. <laughs> just a little too short to be able to see in the camera very clearly. And my angle is kind of strange to be um, working over there with a, a little um, stool or something to be able to see in the camera better. So... I'm going to just hope that we can see this okay. So I've got my rocks here holding down my plastic sheeting to kind of help protect my workspace. This is a very messy medium I have found. I'm super proud of myself because that was the only mess I made yesterday. I lost very little paint and I'm super proud of myself for that because I don't like to waste paint. It's expensive. There are so many different ways to do this type of painting. Um, I have been watching YouTube videos and learning from people and I understand some of the um, tricks that I'm learning have names to them and I don't know all the names yet. I will explain them as I go along as I learn myself in case you're just learning too. I've been doing these for about a month. The first couple of days, I not every day, but um, I've been doing these for about 30, 40 days now. The first day I liked it so much I did like 10 of them and <laughs> much to my relief. Um, they sold, most of them sold, so that was, that was really cool. That, that enabled me to go and get some more canvases. Um, but now I'm just doing one, maybe two a day, um, because not only do you have the wet canvases that are drying, because it takes a few days to dry, but then once they dry, you have to um, put, bar well, you don't have to, but I'm choosing to put resin on them. And then once you put resin on them, you have to wait for them to dry. And all of this drying takes up space. And, um, I have learned through trial and error that I do not have that much level space in my studio. Um, in fact, I may need to get rid of a few things that I have in a storage area to make room for some tables that I can level off. I might be able to get my husband to help me with that. I'm not sure. He's busy working on the upstairs remodel, up the upstairs of the studio. If you caught my last video, you would have him and the hammer and the saws and everything going on this weekend as he works to finish that up for winter. Um, the goal here is to make it so that I can keep the heat in so I can keep working in here all winter long and I don't have to move any of this inside the house. Okay. Anyway, I need more storage space. So that's kind of why I'm limiting the amount that I'm doing. And then also, um, my I, I am actually a, a silk artist. I do hand-painted silk. Um, for wall hangings as well as scarves to wear and I, I don't want to forget that I'm a silk artist. I really am committed to this hand-painted silk medium and if nothing else this will actually this work with this medium. I think it's going to help out my silk a lot actually. It certainly has made me focus in on the colors I've been using on my silk because to date I've just been kind of willy-nilly letting the colors happen and I'm noticing with these um, um, Dutch pores that I'm really kind of focusing in on a palette that I love. Not that I won't continue to take requests and things like that. Of course I will. But um, for, I guess they would say branding purposes. I know some people that hate that word branding. But um, to make your pieces look kind of, you know, the same so people can tell when they see your work that it's your work. And style is something that all artists kind of, I think, strive to achieve. Um, but it takes a little while because you can't you, you can't really force style. You can force subject matter, but um, you know do all your pieces country western or do all your pieces one way or the other, one style or another. Do all flowers or something like that. But your style really, um, I believe, takes some time to evolve, and it's a combination of what you like and and how your hands move across a canvas kind of creates a certain look to all of your pieces. Okay, use my fingers to help get this around the edge. Now you do not, you do not have to um, push all this stuff all the way to the edge like I do. I do because I get, um, 
obsessive about having paint reach all the way to the corners of my canvas, which is weird because I don't mind texture. When I'm working on it, I don't mind when the paint blows off and leaves some canvas texture there. But when I start off, I do. And if I don't do this, I tend to work the piece too long trying to get the paint, the paint to all four edges. Now I'm just using um, Floetrol with a little bit of titanium white in here. And um, I'm noticing that some people are using house paint for this. I've actually experimented with that a little bit. I experimented with some house tints because I had some available. For a while there, I wasn't able to find any Floetrol. And so I experimented with some house paints. I did not know anything about any of the artists that were doing work with that. I just knew I needed some white paint for the bottom of this. And I caught somewhere that someone had done some work like this with Elmer's glue. So I thought, well, house paint, you know, it's probably going to be better than Elmer's glue. How do I get the extra paint on? Whoosh. Um, so I used house paint and it kind of made the base translucent, but I, I used a tint, not, a, I, I mean, it didn't have a tint, it didn't have any color in it. It was a base. And if you're not familiar, different paints have different bases. There's like A, B, C, or one, two, three. That determined what the ultimate color of the latex paint is going to be when you've got a house, when you're when you're painting your house or a building or whatever. And um, pop, 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 pop. And um, you want to use tint C. I've since found out, which I think I had on accident. I just was using tint C. Um, and then I tried some regular white house paint, and then I tried some kills, and the kills actually worked pretty good. It was too thick. For the base it didn't flow very well it allowed it was good for me because I'm still overactive with the blowing of the piece so it kind of helped slow that down for me I was able to blow more because it was so thick and I really like the kills pieces but they they were really thick and they when they've dried they have a very they had a very inconsistent texture which I actually adored but um, a lot of people don't want that texture I think it looks cool and the people that have seen the piece actually really like it they like that it looks that way um, but what it really means is that the paint was too thick and it dried unevenly and it cracked so the blue was the turquoise was American loft the blue is um, a combination of phthalo blue and white to be honest with you, I did a blue piece and there was a lot of leftover paint on the side and I just scooped it up and stuck it into a cup. And that's what that blue is. It's a combination of, I just was doing a piece that was just all blue and white. And that's what the combination of that paint looked like. I thought, well, that's a pretty color. I'll just save it and try and use it in another piece like I'm doing today. So the orangey color there is a burnt sienna. And then this color that you just saw is Lumiere, Lumiere, Lumiere. It's a clothing paint, actually, um, bronze that I used in some red and black pieces yesterday. And oh my gosh, they came out so pretty. Next, I'm adding some Mars Black. This is Liquitech Basics Mars Black. I'm gonna turn this on high heat and high power.
there's a little less paint over in this corner. It's actually rolled off this side. Let's see if I can roll it up a little bit, balance it out a little more. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that my table's a little bit, actually, I think it's leaning this way. It must have gotten turned around. It's leaning a little bit this way today. Um, my table, my working table is not level um, um, because I want this to dry in a level spot. So in order to make it dry in a level spot, I had to um, make it level where it's drying. So where I'm working on it, it is not level. And I, I like what's happening, but I want to have a little bit more um, cohesiveness in here. And I might just leave it like that. Check that out. Without even blowing it. Let me get a little bead in there. That's pretty hip. Bring it this way a little bit. Yeah, quite a bit of paint came my way. My little white apron took a bit of a beating. Now at this point you can go in and um, one girl I was watching today, I'm going to leave her name in my notes. I don't want to say her name incorrectly, um, but she had a little um, airbrush and without even painting it was just using the air instead of blowing on it with a straw. <laughs> There's such a big space here. I love that what that did in there, but it's not very much one of these things is not like the others. And I've got this um, raised up on push pins. If you're not familiar with this art form, you don't really want it resting on the table because you will have paint overflowing. There's not very much paint left in here. I don't think I get to do this. Yeah. There's not enough in there to do that. I wonder what would happen. Probably not a very good idea here. Hi, what's up? Did you say something about Jenny? Yes. Totally forgot. She's not there anymore. She's down drinking at the Legion. I totally forgot. You like it? Mm -hmm. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I do, so I need to know if you like it, so I'll keep it. Did I tell you what it reminds me of? You won't like it? What does it remind you of? The missing outfit? Oh, that's okay. That looks good. I don't think the black is really harsh to me. Well, I maybe I'll go over it with a little blue. Those are really nice. That's all I can say. Yep, we forgot. I'm still waiting to hear from Kim. Go to Brenda. AJ and I are not doing a very good job of celebrating our anniversary. <laughs> what are you guys going to do? Nothing, because I'm going to Brenda's. He came out and talked to me about it. He's like, no, I think you should go. You never go out with your friends. It was inside on the bed a while back.
this part is bugging me because it's so difficult. I like it now. I wasn't sure if I liked it earlier. And um, before I did all this, I probably should have gone over with a heat gun to get rid of air bubbles, but I haven't had the huge problem with air bubbles that other people have had. Knock on wood. And this tool, the little creme de brulee, little mini torch, um, tends to bring out more of the circles in the artwork. Gotta move fast, I don't wanna burn the paint. Um, and that creates depth and texture in the piece and not everybody likes it. I don't always use the blowtorch on all my pieces, but I've noticed that the blowtorch can really add some neat, really neat, um, effects. When I first tried the blowtorch, I didn't like it at all. And now I find myself kind of starting to actually utilize it a bit more. And sometimes, you know, you go in and you, sh you shoot it with a blowtorch and you don't think anything's happened. And then you go away and it continues to kind of work its magic after you've left the area. I can hear it's bringing out all those spots. And you look back and you go, oh my gosh, did I spill on my painting? It's got, it's got all these dots on it now. And then as they continue to evolve and form, you're like, oh... That's what people were talking about when they were talking about creating cells and whatnot. Oh, goodness. I wasn't too sure I was gonna like this piece when it initially started out because I wanna work the paint a little bit. I don't want it to just be a spray. Um, I know some people like the spray, but I like to mess with it a little bit more, um, work with my color interactions a little more than that. And yet I don't want one spot, you know, I still don't really like, I'm not really keen that this is big, but because this is big over here, it kind of balances itself out. I've got white here and I've got white here. I'm trying to add a little more flow troll on this end. I don't have any more white paint mixed up, so this is just going to be flow troll, which is going to give it a little bit of a different feel, a little more translucent feel. Totally okay with that. Of the color bubbles. I want to touch the edge. And a lot of the artists that are working in this medium are trying to get a totally flat surface, and I am not necessarily trying to do that. I kind of like it when there's some thick and some thin paints. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and, oh, I'll just say this now. If you like this video, press the thumbs up sign. If you want to see more of my videos as I progress through my learning experience here with Dutch Pour Liquid Acrylic Paints, um, press subscribe and you can get notifications about when I put out a new video. And if you press the down arrow button, you can find out more about me and my business. I sell my originals on Etsy and there's links to that. And I've got a website, carlakart.com and all that. So I hope you're having a great day. And until next time, I will be in the art studio. And uh, go out, get outside and enjoy the weather. It's beautiful out there today. Bye for now.
Here is the beautiful masterpiece that I made today. Just love the way these cells have broken out and the burnt sienna has um, overlaid with the blues and the turquoises. Southwestern colors. It's so hot here in the Pacific Northwest. I kind of did a little ode to my alma mater, ASU in Tempe, Arizona, in the Southwest. Um, gosh, really liking how this piece came out. Just gorgeous. Hope you're having a great day. Bye.